Yeah. Uh, hello, I'm Kwon Se Young, who teaches English as a homeroom teacher in one of the elementary schools uh, in South Korea. Uh, first, uh, I'd like to thank Serbi and all the other edu educators for allowing me to present at this session. Uh, my elementary school is located in the countryside. Uh, since it is not a big city like Seoul in South Korea, students rarely have a chance to talk to foreigners in English. Uh, therefore, students often ask me if they were supposed to uh, learn English. So it is my worries uh, how to make them um, enthusiastic to learn English. Uh, and Koreans speak English as a foreign language. Uh, the, the, environment, the environment of learning English is very different from you, like as a mother tongue or as a second language. So Korean elementary school students only learn English two or three hours a week, and they rarely use English in their life. So my students did not feel the need to learn English well and did not have much time to learn English frequently, fluently. In this situation, it was not easy to proceed well with uh, English class every time and every day. So the goal of English class is to meet uh, foreign friends through online classes and make them have fun in my class. So I started the uh, online exchange classes. Uh, two years ago in two uh, 2018, I contacted Ms. Uh, Serbi because of international online class exchanges. Uh, after finishing the, the multicultural ex exchange project class, my classmates and my students wanted to know about India. And just in time, we contacted Ms. Serbi and started the friend uh, making project. Uh, as you see this screen, uh, first we exchange the letters with each other. Uh, I think that letters is the most basic means of making friends. It was a great motivation for my classmates uh, who had rarely met foreign friends. Here are the letters written by my classmates and the letters sent by teacher Serbi. And this Yes, and the left two letters are from India, and the right two letters are the things that my students wrote to send to India. And they, actually, my students uh, had a low level English proficiency, but they tried really best to uh, write some things to uh, send Indian friends. Actually, the class did not take place in a special way, nor did it require teaching skills. However, through this chart, the children in my class were able to learn why English was necessary, which led to a positive learning effect, I think. Actually, this screen is uh, one of the children I taught at the time was a disabled student, and the letter uh, in this screen uh, was by her. She was not easy to speak or write with her native language, so it was almost impossible to write in English. But she really wanted to communicate with Indian friends. So she tried her best to learn and write some sentences in English to send letters to India. Uh, through, this, uh, through this picture, I realized that the learning takes place in real life in my students. After that, I tried to make a project with School of India with Srubi and the other teachers, and we exchanged a lot of the class ideas. And my students uh, were very curious about the food that Indian friends eat. And just in time, a friend of India sent us a video introducing the traditional Indian drink. I don't know, I, I don't know that food name exactly, but I, I remember that the name of the Indian uh, food was Punjabi. Do you know Punjabi? Yes, Kong, we know Punjabi. <laughs> yeah, and it was my first time to know about Punjabi. And we tried making it together in English class, and we drank it together with my students. After that, the students of mine wanted to introduce Korean friend, uh, so we started the project under the theme of Korean food concert and world, world food concert. Uh, 
they made materials introducing Korean food in English, and some friends made videos and sent recipes to schools in India. It was impressive to see friends who did not know why to learn English using but they used Google, they used the Google Translator and wrote English sentences by themselves. And it was my uh, impressive uh, point while teaching English to them. And finally, we proceeded to deliver a cultural exchange gift. To deliver gifts and food containing Korean culture, children made a data by group. When he carefully packed the gifts and sent them to India with the children's letters, we felt like Santa Claus. Surprisingly, uh, Serbia also sent a gift box containing traditional Indian souvenirs. Uh, through our Indian friends, we were able to realize the need for learning English and the meaning of global exchange, like you, the teachers. Uh, after that, several additional projects have been carried out, such as market play with Indian friends. When our class uh, students became sixth grade, they worked on a project called World Tour Fair Together. They made their own virtual travel agencies and delivered tour guide products. And the countries uh, they chose were very diverse, including India, Taiwan, the United Kingdom, USA, and Greece and South Africa and so, and so forth. They, they chose so many countries, even though they don't know how to speak English free, uh, fluently, but they tried their best. I think that uh, while having the culture exchange with uh, Indian schools and the other country schools, it was a moment of self-creating through lessons that we needed to interact with people from a wide variety of countries in our lives. Uh, actually, my students did not ask after after having the online class online exchange culture classes. My students did not ask why they need to learn English again after having uh, those experiences. They know the pleasure of learning English while doing and communicating each other. I think that the best way to learn English uh, and something is to communicate and learn through life. And it is very short, but uh, I, I prepared about the experience while doing uh, some projects with the Serbia and the other teachers. Thanks for listening to my speech. Thank you. That's it. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to do next, so... <laughs> On this survey, would you please <laughs> proceed? Um, it's my turn. Yeah, I think so. Thank you. Okay, 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 thanks. Uh, hello, I'm, I'm from Taiwan. Um, so today uh, I'm going to share some something in my country because uh, in Taiwan uh, we did not close the school, so uh, we go to school every day, but we do something in our school. For example, how uh, how my topic is how students study at school under COVID nineteen threatened in Taiwan. And as this is poster, that this poster is of our grade uh, six graders. They are going to graduate, but we are we are afraid that they are they cannot have the ceremony. But now we are safe, so they can have their graduation. And this is the poster of their um, art exhibition. They put the national flags on their masks. I think this is a kind of art exhibition. So, and how what we did at school every day, like uh, teachers take students' temperature every morning. Yeah, every morning since uh, I think it's February, since 
now. But uh, very lucky, next week, uh, we are, our government say we don't need to take at, uh, temperatures anymore. But this is now, we are doing now. But next week, we don't do this anymore. Yeah. And so we are very happy that we, um, the coronavirus uh, cases is not, is, is okay now here. And then we take the temperatures and then we put a stamp on students' hands. That means they check already. Yeah. So we put a stamp on their hands. And then after after that, we close um, some gates at a school because we are afraid some neighbors, they will come into the school without taking a temperature. So we close some gates. So we only open two gates. Yeah, and, but and if, we, we, if the gates is open, then we need teachers stay there to take everyone's temperatures. In case, uh, I, we, we want to make sure they are safe. They don't have a fever. And then, um, except that our government give all the schools some masks and hand cleaners, so kids and teachers they will we will sterilize the classroom every day in case everyone is safe and keep them healthy. Yeah. So, but this is from our government. But if we for the individual, if we want to buy the masks, we only can buy nine in two weeks and we you we have to use our health card to buy the masks we cannot just buy it but from next week uh, we can buy uh, anyone's and how many masks we want to buy then it's okay because uh, our cases is not serious now so we can buy a lot of masks because some uh, people's family they live uh, overseas so we can buy the mask for them and we can mail the mask uh, to our family in the overseas and this is uh wash your hands is very very important so we practice we wash hand every day and also keep a social distance from others at least the 1.5 meters in indoor and one meter out, outdoor. This is outdoor and this is indoor. And uh, it, this is like a student's assembly. So we have to wear masks, yeah. But actually it's not, it's very, it's not very easy to keep distance 1.5 meters, but we try. And then this is um, when they are dancing, they wear masks, they are taking the pictures, they wear masks. And also the, they have uh, activities in the classroom and even they um, uh, prepare some food. Yeah, they can wear masks. But we didn't close the school, but we, we are afraid that we are going to close the school. So we did a distance and remote learning rehearsal. Remote learning. Yeah, even we did not close the school. Yeah, so we did this at school. We have to practice, but 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 luckily we didn't close our school because well we we go to school every day, and this is our school. But and now this one is some school in Taiwan, but it's not my school. Um, they put this the plastic, and in case they will, um, infection get infected by the others. So they put they they are eating when they are studying, and they put a plastic shield. Uh, on their table. Yeah, this is some other school. And yeah, and this is um this is a very they put the plastic like astronaut. <laughs> yeah, but but this is um not every school did this. Just some, just very few school did this. Yeah, but so I think um, the coronavirus in Taiwan is uh, controlling, is under control. So I think we are happy and we can study and we can see our teachers and students every day. So thank you for listening. Goodbye. Okay, so that's all. This is my presentation for today. Very good presentation. Thank you. Thank you.
Well, I'm going, I'm going to share my screen also. Uh, let me try that to do that. I hope that's way. Oh my goodness. Yeah, can you see my presentation? Let me know. Uh, Alina, can we wait for a second? Yeah, 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 I can. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Fine. Uh, I have I never noted I was on mute. So, okay, so I just have a question. Does anyone has a question from Sandy for social distancing practices? Because uh, it's, it's surprising to see that they never close the school and they are following the curriculum with a very, uh, they're following the social distancing norms already. So does anyone from any of the countries, they have some question on, uh, because I've seen our kids, they are notorious, I've told that already. And uh, I don't know how you are making them sit at one place. Uh, they are young. So does anyone have a question on how they are doing it? Do we have some doubts? Okay, I just noticed that we have Athalo and Adobe also who joined us. Welcome Athalo, welcome Adobe. Uh, okay, so we, I think uh, so she has already told us. That's good, that's beautiful. So we don't have a questions. I'm taking this, uh, when nobody asks questions, it means everybody. Please, should we, I, I, may I ask one? Yeah, yes, Bonali, please ask yes. the question. What, uh, my question is like uh, in India, we have suppose uh, 40, students uh, sitting in one classroom so due to social distancing is it that we have to split our classroom further that was uh, i was actually asking because uh, in uh, mumbai icsc schools and all not mumbai all over india icsc schools uh, they have to open for their pending examination and all or probably we are thinking of carrying on our uh, higher classes so that was my question key uh, for social distancing. It is not possible to manage the same number of strength in the in a um, uh, classroom area. So we may need to uh, split the classrooms further. So how you do, you people manage that? So Sandy, how are you doing it in table? Are you, so are you people uh, splitting on the students or the same number is joining the classroom? Sorry, I cannot hear the question well. Yeah, so in Taiwan, uh, what is this? Uh, are you, uh, uh, so the question is that in your classroom, are you calling students, uh, dividing them into two groups and calling one group first and the second group on some other day? So have you done some alternate oh, yeah. classes? Yeah, during this uh, coronavirus uh, time, we try not to group students because that's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. So we hope then uh, we, so, uh, so the question. Sure, we were, we were group students, but now we try. We we try not to group students because that's not good for the social distance. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. The question, uh, Sandy, is that uh, according to the strength of students, supposedly there are twenty students in total in your class. So, are all twenty students attending classes, or you are calling uh, ten students on alternate basis in the school? Um. You mean. You mean they. Uh, they come to school at the same time yeah they yeah. don't take a turn to see okay so they come to school at the same time yeah yeah they don't take a turn to school they all all the students they yeah come at the same time yes that's right is that why you ask yes yes thank you that was a question yeah yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yes so yes adobe had some question adobe do you want to ask yes yes please yes please i want to ask okay so i noticed that um the place that the children were using the shield, not the face shield, the plastic cover to cover up their faces. I noticed yeah. it was a bit, it was quite higher than their faces. I don't know the age group. So I'm trying to limit to the preschoolers. Yeah. Now, how the, is the one? The plastic cover, the plastic cover, the plastic cover. Yes. So how is learning done in such a place that their faces are actually covered and everybody is on your own. How is the teacher communicating to those children? <laughs> how are they, how yes. is their communication across the class, classroom? Now, I, another thing is- I see what you mean, but- Yes, the temperature that you check when you, they come in. Actually, that, that one is not, not one. from my school. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you, I can hear you. You, you are okay. asking about the cover, right? Yes, the plastic cover, not the face yes. shield. 
the plastic yes. cover. Yes. Yeah. So how is that communication passed through? Yeah, of course they, they still can hear. Just just they in case they are uh, uh, what you know they they was when they speak they will through the drip with going to you know infection get it uh, because they will get an infection. So they that's in uh, in order to to avoid the the you know the air infection. The, when when they talk when, you know, when they, they talk. might you know, they, yeah, when they talk, yeah when they talk they can they can still hear. They can still hear what they are talking about, just just in case the the, the um, water mouth. Yes. Okay, so I think uh, uh, Sandy has a point over here that uh, there are chances of water droplets from mouth spitting uh, or splitting out on other students or maybe on ground. Yes, yeah, and water that's drop, where yeah. They are, they are keeping that shield over there in place to avoid that situation, which makes a valid point at one place. But yes, Adobe has a point that if we talk about preschoolers, you cannot uh, keep control over the class if the shields are of that oh, yeah, yeah. So I yeah, think of course. Yeah. That's a valid point. I think Adobe has yeah. one more question, Adobe. What was your second question about? Yes, I wanted to talk about the temperature they check once the kids are entering the classroom, once they come to school. That's the only time you check, check, you check the temperature, right? Oh. Okay, oh, you mean so, the temperature of the children, they are only checked only once they enter inside the classroom. Is that enough for the combat of the COVID-19 pandemic around Taiwan? Because yes. I feel that even as they are in school, there are a lot of things that are happening. Because I'm just looking at the 1.5 meters and I'm saying they are kids. And how do you expect yeah. them not to move around, to go and use the restroom, yeah. to oh, yeah, sure, jump yeah. around to it's keep very... the from the next person and all that? Yes. My focus is really so on the preschoolers because I know that the um, higher elementary can handle themselves when you give them instructions. What about yes. the younger ones who don't even understand that needs to see the teacher's face at every given time for there to be yes. an interaction in the classroom? Covering that and then checking the temperature just once, I don't think is very healthy. Except you're saying that um, you guys yeah. have really worked if, on the COVID-19 around the time one. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Adobe. I think, uh, uh, Sandy, we can uh, borrow some ideas and maybe we can apply in the classrooms and the places. And uh, Adobe has a point that it's important students are moving around <laughs> and they will exchange uh, gestures while in restrooms or in the corridors. So somebody has to monitor them throughout the day. So yes, I think we can borrow ideas and keep on improvising. That's the situation we all are handling for the first time in our lifetimes and we don't want to do it all over again on uh, these exactly. years going further. So thank you very much Adobe for uh, the insight. Adobe, uh, can I know from the country? I'm so sorry, like uh, it just- Nigeria. Nigeria, yes, Adobe is from Nigeria. So yes, uh, she has joined us for the first time today and we are getting these insights from her. Thank you, uh, Adobe. Okay, so let us move to our next uh, speaker for the day. I'm expecting we don't have any question. Participants, if you have any question, please raise uh, the hand which is on your screen. So you can, uh, don't raise your hands like this because I cannot see it. So there's a, a icon of uh, a hand on your screen. You can always touch it, raise it. I will get to know that you want to ask a question. So Alina, the session is all over to you. So Alina is the last presenter for the day and she will give us some beautiful feedback about Flipgrid, which I believe most of you have used and Alina is also using in her classroom. So Alina, yeah. yours. Let, let me know if you can hear me. Uh, yes, we can hear you and we can okay. see you. Okay, well, good. Uh, I am from Russia and today I would like to uh, present you the platform Flipgrid. I'm sure many people, many teachers know that, uh, but uh, when I uh, listened to other uh, speakers today, I wanted to uh, say and to pay attention on the theme of COVID also and to say, here in Russia, the situation is rather difficult, and uh, I am not sure who is like here, the students in Taiwan who visit, who attend the school, or the students of Russia who stay at home. But during the lockdown, I also had many problems. That's why 
I think that this platform, I mean Flipgrid, is one of the tools which can help teachers and students around the world in a remote learning also. That's why I have chosen this topic for discussion today. Well, uh, some words about myself. Oh, let me change. Yeah. Well, so my name is, sorry, sorry. My name is Alina and... Uh, uh, I have been working at Lyceum number 33 in Ivanova, Russia. This is a small city not far from the capital of our country. And I am also a, a Skype master teacher, one of five Skype master teachers in Russia. Uh, I am a Microsoft trainer, so I am ready to share my knowledge with you and to tell you many interesting aspects of using Skype in the classroom. And uh, because I use the platform Flipgrid, I am also the ambassador of the student's voice. And I think this platform is one of the best for me because it helps me and my students and it is the original platform of video connection with the students. Nowadays, the uh, young generation, teenagers, uh, they like to watch videos, they like to create, record videos, and if you ask them what is the best task for them, many of them in my country say, we would like to record, we would like to create something. And I think that this platform helps me in different aspects, in checking my home task, in giving some projects, in assignment, and so on. It is a social learning platform for children. Uh, you can take any children from kindergarten to the colleges and universities. And nowadays, this platform has got uh, the voices of students and the teachers from more than 180 countries. So people use it, teachers like it, and the students are keen on using this platform for their lessons. Uh, it is very interesting that you can record the video from 15 seconds to 10 minutes and it's also very nice because the teacher can regulate, can moderate the length of the video. Uh, he or she, I mean teachers, can give the criteria. Uh, they can also uh, manage to give uh, likes or not to give, to give uh, feedbacks or not feedbacks and it is very nice also. And only teachers can create grids and they can moderate them if you have this option, if you want to use this option. And it is also very nice that uh, during two months, almost three months of lockdown in my country, I had many students' video. And every time I had the, the uh, question where to save them, how uh, to keep them safe, uh, how I can collect something interesting. And this platform helps me also. So I can create a grid, I can moderate it, and the students there can share their projects, ideas, thoughts, or maybe their tasks. Because nowadays I use grids for tasks, for everyday, for everyday lessons. Well, uh, I think its platform is a unique also because you can use this platform uh, using your computers or gadgets. It's very nice if students can uh, use not only laptops or computers, but their phones or iPads. And this platform has different kinds of, kinds of access, uh, Android, iOS, and even the browser, what is very nice. And only the one thing you need is the internet access. Yes, you can ask me that nowadays many families have the problems with the access. Even in my country, I have this problem. But if we speak about the phones, I think almost every child has a phone. Maybe, maybe they have the problem with the internet connection. But if they choose the day or maybe the time when they can leave their houses and to go to uh, their relatives, uh, 
or something like that, they can do that also. So for me, it was not a great problem. I mean the internet access. But other things were also very difficult, not only for uh, children, for students, but also for teachers, also for, for parents. And now that, uh, know why? Uh, I think this platform is very also nice for parents because I use such option as mixtapes and I try to get the portfolios of videos of my students and I share with my parents and they can see the progress of the student sometimes not progress but anyway they can see that everything in one place they can see the collection of their child and it is also very nice for teachers I think well if you don't use this platform, I think it's easy to use and of course I advise you to try to taste it. Just creating an account, you need to click flipgrid.com uh, and you can join like an educator. Here you can see educator sign up. It is free. It is free for children. It is free for parents. It is free for educators. And you also can share the grids with with the uh, teachers, maybe you can make interdisciplinary uh, flip grids. I, for uh, as for me, I use flip grid for after school activities. This platform uh, was. Uh, 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 created in 2015 and Microsoft uh, is uh, uh, the creators is a part of this uh, platform also. You can see the creators Charlie Muir, uh, Phil Soran and Jim Leslie. And the most important thing, the most important mission of Flipgrid is to provide students with necessary support. Uh, so here they can uh, uh, try and they can show very important things so they can um, make their speech uh, very qualified they can uh, make the ideas their thoughts and their projects and they can share them but it's also very important you need to be tolerated to other people's opinion. You uh, need uh, uh, care about their feelings. And uh, I think it's one of the best ideas. Uh, this platform is very social and it is, uh, I think it is very personal, uh, personal uh, side also. Well, three steps, sign up, uh, almost done because you needed to write down the information about the country, about the school, the grade where you uh, teach. And uh, if you need, if you have, uh, for example, like a student, just to enter a flip code. It's easy to use and my students, even primary school students, use this platform. Uh, here you can see the account of the teacher and you can see the grids like i say grid it is a book it is um, the topic the global topic we can discuss also we have a small uh, like i say chapters uh, the topics so i can use one grid for many topics for many small parts of the books also, I told you about mixtapes, so the collections of students' answers, co-pilots uh, or grid pilots, uh, pals, also very interesting options of these accounts. And if you want to create the grid, you just need to click add new grid. As I told you, it is a book. For example, here you can see the great book Russia or family and friends or about me, of Flipgrid in Russia. And then we can have small parts of these books. For example, if we speak about Russia, here we can have different collections, different topics. Favorite writers, famous writers, well, scientists, the climate zones of Russia, the sites, uh, schools in Russia, and so on. I'm sure your students will like it and they can work distantly. It is also very good in these conditions. Well, uh, one more thing is good for teachers that 
teacher chooses the settings which are suitable for him or for her. So like feedbacks, you can give a feedback to each reply. It's nice. Uh, teachers and both students, if you give the access to them, they can give likes. And for example, my students like to choose the best video in different topics. It's also very interesting for them. Uh, even uh, children, even students can give replies. And if they like or maybe dislike some of the videos, they can, they can record the reply for this video and the teacher can give the criteria. It's also pretty nice because before recording a video, students can see uh, which mark they can get uh, using following these criteria. And I think it's also very nice that students uh, also can use one special option I know even uh, among my students, there are uh, st students who are very shy and they don't want other students could see them, could see their videos. We try to arrange this point, uh, this opinion, and there is an option where you can hide the video. Only teacher and only the student will be able to see the video, will be able to see the reply. I think it's also very nice, especially for children who have some problems, some special characteristics, some special traits. Well, uh, you can find friends around the world if you have the same topic or the same grid and they are called the grid pals just activate this special option in your account and many teachers around the world will be able to join you and to be a part of your project for example, our first uh, guest speaker today uh, told about the uh, cultural projects. It's a good idea because using Flipgrid, we can exchange the customs and traditions. We can show the symbols of our countries. And they, uh, I mean the students and the teachers, will be able to know more about other countries using this nice option, Grid Pals. Uh, also, teachers can be co-pilots. I think it's also a very good idea to be a co-pilot and to choose uh, some of the topics which are common for different uh, teachers around the world. For example, you can invite some of the teachers to uh, your grids and uh, you can add topics for this grid, you can uh, record videos and invite students to record videos, but Copilot could not and can't uh, delete the grid. So there is no this right for Copilot. So Copilots can collaborate together. And if you have the same topic, if you have the same idea, you can invite as many teachers as you can for having your grid more and more fruitful and effective. I think it's also a good idea. And I try to invite many teachers, not only around the world, but also in Russia. I told you that I use a flip grid for uh, uh, after school activities and uh, some weeks ago we had a great holiday victory day and we have a great patriotic, a great um, uh, grid about the world war, the second world war, and the teachers and students from different schools of Russia, from different parts of Europe, could uh, add some videos and could uh, uh, say the words of the proudness, the uh, words of uh, celebration to our nation. This library, it is also very interesting feature, and I use it daily. Uh, it's a unique place where a teacher can find the ideas for his or her lessons, for his or her future grids. So here there are no videos, just the topics, just the ideas. It is free of charge, and uh, I have watched recently more than 16 thousand ideas nowadays 
are in Disco Library. So just you need to click Disco Library in your account to find exciting ideas uh, how to use a Flipgrid in uh, your teaching process, in after school activities or in uh, lesson, during the lessons. You can choose the topic which you would like to add if you have many ideas and you have the opportunity to upgrade this topic every time until you will make it a part of your grid, until you record the videos. Uh, a great uh, collection. Uh, here also I want to show you uh, about different languages students and the teachers use a Flipgrid. Many teachers ask me, of course, you know English, why don't you to use, for example, Flipgrid? But I try to show you that here you can see, for example, German language. Here you can see Russian language. It means that teachers around the world use this platform, use it widely for their activities. And it is very nice. So not only for English lesson, for different subjects, you can use this platform. Well, uh, one more thing which is very interesting and attractive for students, it is QR codes and virtual reality. Using the QR code, students can uh, try to scan it and to see, for example, my video with the task. They think it's nice, they think it's exciting, and they do it often. So you can do it also. Just record a short video, uh, generate a QR code using this platform, and send it to your students. They will be happy to find out what task it will be. And the last thing uh, here I would like to share with you is short camera. You know, it's a nice thing because nowadays you can record your screen and you can explain the material of the lesson uh, and uh, you, uh, students will be able to see you and uh, the, uh, well, uh, word uh, paper or maybe the presentation or something like that because Shots Camera allow to use the screen with uh, your video. It's easy and funny and also very interesting for my students to use it because there are many emojis, there are many symbols, there are many filters and when students record their videos they are able to stop recording. Uh, they are able to think a little bit, to come back, to cut down the video and make it perfect. I think these options are perfect. Uh, and I told you about the mission. Their nice, their correct thoughts, their qualified thoughts. So this option helps children to um, think to uh, upgrade their thoughts and to make a nice video for sending it for teacher or just for uh, uploading it in a Flipgrid. It's very nice also. Well, and of course I wanted to make a conclusion. Uh, I thought about reflection and I think that the platform can't be popular and can't be famous if it is nice only for one or another group. Here we can see that both teachers and students have advantages. Both, I told you that parents also can join. As for teachers, first of all, it is a place for art. You can create something, you can change, you can find the ideas. Uh, also, uh, it is safer to keep the videos in one place. And I told you that uh, teacher is a moderator. He is like an educator, uh, yeah, like an educator, has a special account, and he has got the right to do many things, to open video, to uh, close video to hide or to change and something like that. Of course, you can create mixtapes and I told you that you can uh, share with parents or maybe with society. It's up to you, it's up the task. Uh, it's nice. Uh, making video for lessons, I mean explanations, uh, using a uh, short camera, you can even record your screen, it's good. Uh, of course, uh, the interaction. Uh, one thing uh, which is uh, perfect for me is uh, that I 
I am able to send the feedbacks to my students, to explain the mistakes, to pay attention uh, on pronunciation or something like that. And they try to read my feedbacks, they try to change uh, their attitude to this video. And of course, teacher can moderate. And one more thing I did not tell you, it's inclusive education. Flipgrid has an immersive reader and for teenagers, for students who have some psychological problems, it is also very nice. So it's good. If we speak about students, of course, it is the opportunity to work as fast as he or she can. I think it's also very good that we can pay attention on uh, psychological things and the traits of children, the character of children. Uh, it's kind of a privacy uh, which students can have, for example, if they don't want to share their videos, it's also very good. Of course, they develop different skills. I don't speak about communicative skills because for me it's very important. But other skills, uh, like uh, uh, the skill of uh, listening, uh, the skill of uh, uh, collaborating with other students, because during the remote learning, we can play Mystery Skype using Flipgrid. We have the special classes around the world, and we ask each other questions to find out the location. Of course, it's a nice a platform for projects and intercultural competency, of course, and creativity. I told you, I started with uh, that my students like creating videos, like recording something. Uh, most of them are fans of TikTok, or of Instagram and something like that. So here you can motivate them, you can give them the tasks uh, like they like, and it is also very nice. Well, uh, here there is a the small step-by-step uh, -step, uh, special, uh, well, uh, special thing uh, to, uh, to, to show you how to, uh, how to uh, register, how to sign up. So you need to click the Educator login, uh, you need to choose, uh, if you are a student, enter a flip code if you have it. Uh, usually I ask my students and I ask other colleagues to uh, sign up using their Google account. If you don't have, you can use their Microsoft account. And the three easy steps to create something. First of all, click Add the Grid. Then you give the name of your grid. Remember that the grid is a global topic. I mean, it's a book. Uh, then uh, you need to choose one of the options how students can get your grid. Uh, it is a school email, it is student ID or a public. I advise everyone to use public because you will have the link and you can send this link privately to your students. Uh, if you speak, if we speak about school email or student ID, uh, it makes harder for a teacher, but just for the first time. As for me, I don't use these options. I always use public uh, access and it is pretty enough for me. Well, then you click next if you use a public uh, and your grid is ready. You can go to your grid. After that, you need to click add the topic and you need to uh, remember that topic is a chapter of the book. It is a smaller, but for book, we can have many, many parts. Uh, one more thing I told you that you can choose the length of the video and it is pretty nice. Also here you can write down number 13 criteria. So you can uh, write down the questions for your students and they will understand uh, why you give them up. And that is uh, just all set and your grid is ready. You can click copy and send the link or you can uh, copy your uh, QR code and send it to your students. It's easy to use and nice when your students have fun and do what they like most of all. Do not forget that the young generation, the generation like here in Russia, we said Z, uh, 
they like something faster, they like something creative, and they like video. Well, if you need my help in flip grid, in creating grids, in signing up, I am welcome here. You can see my uh, information, so where you can find me. Uh, I am ready, and if you have your grids, I'm even ready to uh, make your copilots. If you want to be my copilot, you are welcome. I will be happy to uh, share what I know, and I will be happy to see your students in our grids. There it is. So B, I have finished. Okay, so thank you, Alina. Thank you very much. Uh, let me stop your presentation. Yeah, oh, thank you. It was more, less of a presentation, more of a tutorial, I believe. Uh, we got completely deep insights into Flipgrid. And uh, you can see my son moving around, jumping there. So, <laughs> okay, so anyone has any questions? Do we have questions over here? We have Ashley. Ashley is asking questions, so yes. Uh, Ashley, please. is my mic working now? Yeah, your mic is working now. Okay. Right. Um, I had two questions. Um, I saw that you were setting up with public access. It's, it's only with the code, right? That's not really public. They have to have a code. So it's still private, essentially. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I, underst I understand your question. Well, uh, I mean, uh, public uh, uh, it is not uh, public it students in our i send one by one it depends on the situation so other teachers other people can see it only if i have this link uh, well in social webs or something like that so it is not um, public uh, it, it does not mean that it is everywhere it is okay. very important but when uh, we have a, for example school id i know many schools who have school id and it yep. is very very nice for them maybe it is safer but for me it is not very um, comfortable and for my students also maybe um, i i think it's uh, the idea that um, Mm, Russian students are very open, they are very social, and they don't think that someone can see. I have some students, but not too many. Right, I just know it, for us it'll be a concern with our school if I'm getting approval for it. And then my second question is, can each video be downloaded to the computer? So if I want to save them in my Google Drive, am I able to download them? Yeah, there is an option, so you can you can download the videos from Flipgrid and you can save it for yourself. And it is very good that when you record video, you can use your camera and you can record at once, or you can download video you made, you created before. It's also very nice. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. You are welcome. Okay, so we have Ayarappa Raj. He wants to ask a question. Yes, Ayarappa, please go ahead. Thank you so much for uh, sharing this. Actually, I'm looking for uh, 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 something like this. Okay, last two, three days, I'm uh, you know, uh, uh, just uh, searching for this. So I have both uh, Microsoft account as, as well as the Google account. Uh, which one uh, you, know, you are suggesting? Which one uh, shall I use? Either Microsoft account or uh, because in my school, we are using the Microsoft account. You mean so what is better? Yeah. Well, I I I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. I can't say what is better. As for me, I use Google account, though I have a Microsoft account. It does not matter for a teacher which account to use. But uh, most of uh, students don't have Microsoft account. They have Google uh, emails. That's why I advise everyone to use Google account. They are the same. They are the same. Okay, thank you. Because we are using Microsoft team in my school. So that's why I'm asking. Most of the students also have the Microsoft account. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, if yes, they yes. have the account, of course they can use, yeah. But uh, students don't need to sign up. Need to sign up. Teachers, teachers must uh, sign up, 
and they have the link or they can the QR code, they send it to the, to the students. So no needs for them. If they have a free code, they just... Uh, and uh, that's it, they are in the video, they are in the Flipgrid or in the topic you uh, offered for them. Okay, so now we have with us, Thank you. Thank you. Adobe, Adobe wants to ask a question, thank you, Ayapa. So Adobe has a question, Adobe, please go ahead and ask a question. Hello, Alina. Thank you for your Flipgrid session, it was so wonderful, I love that. Okay, so I want to ask, what about um, teachers and students who are in the rural part of Russia? This flip grid, is it gonna work along with them? Do you connect with such people when um, um, doing the co-piloting and others? Yes. Uh we have many partners around the world and uh, you know it is not like for the moment when we have the grid or for the moment when we have the topic we try to communicate with different nationalities and for my students it is very important to have a partnership with the students and the teachers around the world we invite but we also are ready to join so if you have interesting topics, we are ready to be your co-pilots. We are ready to work for you. And I think it's also good because uh, I try to teach students that we need to help each other. We need to collaborate. We pay attention on sustainable development goals. And one of the goal is partnership. Okay, uh, thank you, Alina. I think Adobe that answers your question. I also have a beautiful experience using Flipgrid and uh, yes, Mystery Skype. It was with a school in Poland and uh, my previous school for which I was part of, it, it was a school in rural area. So the students were from farming background and it was, they were, they enjoyed it like anything. So I would suggest the, the location you be, are based will won't make a difference on using it as I've experienced it personally at my end. Yeah, so thank you very much. I think we have, uh, we are always reached a time of nine. We try to be as punctual as possible, but we have some new educators. So we were able to hear from uh, uh, Jeff earlier. Ashley, I would love to have your introduction, please, with the team. Hello, I am Ashley Manastra. Um, I'm a teacher in the United States. I um, am in South Florida. And I teach at an IB school, an international baccalaureate school. I teach visual arts, IB visual arts, and I'm teaching 3D animation. My background is actually as a 3D animator. Um, I was working in the industry for a while. That's what my degree is in. And I started working um, as a teaching artist and, and it was a natural shift into full-time teaching and I am loving it. So I have done one small international collaboration um, on my own outside of my teaching artist job um, with a, a rural school in Indonesia. Um, we were trying to partner them up and do some do some artwork with them um, and learn about each other a little bit. It was very difficult, I will say the rural I know some people were asking about rural areas. It was very difficult to, to make it work. They didn't have, there was like one cell phone, I think, involved. Um, but it's definitely worth it. I think I'm really excited to be to be here and be part of this. And, and thank you guys for, for having me and for teaching me. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ashley. I think we would love to learn the concept of uh, teacher artist very soon uh, from you. Uh, thank you very much for letting us know. We have Adobe. Adobe, we did not have a formal introduction. Can you please introduce yourself to the team over here? Though we were able to, I think Adobe left, uh, got disconnected. So that's perfectly fine. I think others, uh, we have uh, had a chance earlier, but I would want to run a quick introduction for Jeff and Ashley uh, with all of you. So please uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. So I think... Uh, Sandy and Alina have already introduced themselves, even Scott, uh, even Kwong has. So Andrea, can you please uh, give your introduction uh, to our new team? Yes, with pleasure. My name is Andrea Mennella. I'm a primary school teacher from Italy, in the Umbria region. I am an English teacher. I also have experiences of teaching French, ICT, and physical education. 
education in the primary school. I've been teaching since uh, 1996. And uh, my, my field is essentially uh, training the students within the international, European, of course, and international dimension of education. And we pay a lot of attention to uh, such skills like uh, uh, communication, language, and uh, intercultural education. Okay, thank you, Andrea. Thank you very much. So I think a few of the members had to leave. They have already gone. We have with us uh, Urifa. Urifa, can you please uh, share your introduction with us? Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Urifa. I'm from Indonesia. I'm an English educator, uh, especially in primary level. Uh, well, um, I want to share my experience during my teaching uh, process. That's um, same as Kwan that we in Indonesia, English is considered as a uh, foreign language. So uh, children and even people don't use uh, English in daily life. So it's a bit struggling and freaking uh, activity sometimes to be an English teacher because uh, it's a foreign language. But uh, uh, during uh, our sessions here, it's really opened uh, our view that uh, English can be uh, learned, can be started now, and we can practice right now too with uh, people who speak in English all over the world. And thank you again for Surbi for having me here. And again and again, invite me. And this really, really opened uh, our minds. In the, and thank you, uh, Alina, too, for the great. And I think oh, it's worth to try. And uh, let's have uh, more collaboration with the different uh, topics. And thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Arifa. I, I think I have educators telling me they have to leave because of the time constraint. So uh, please forgive me, my educators from India. I will just uh, give your introduction myself so that I can just brief on this meeting. We have four educators and five, including me, from India. So we have Ayappa Raj and we have Bornali, we have Agam Bajaj and we have Himani. So Himani is uh, helping me out in this collaboration. She is... Uh, just uh, uh, spending her uh, beautiful time with me and letting me uh, just letting me uh, start with this initiative. So both of us are working in that direction. So maybe you will receive some mails from her as well. So this was our uh, third collaboration, third meet. We plan to have one after two weeks and uh, uh, any of the educators who want to present some tutorial or you want to share some learning or maybe the schools who are reopening in next two weeks, they want to share their challenges and their experience. They're most welcome to go ahead and come here and share it with all of us. And if you have some topic you would love to share with the world, please let me know. We will put your slot in the uh, session. And uh, if you have some uh, good uh, feedback for today's session, please go ahead and you have my mail ID. Please share it over there. I'm working on my Chalkabots website and I will uh, I would love to share your feedback over there as a testimonial for the session. So thank you. Thank you very much. I And uh, thank you for uh, sparing time for today's session. Goodbye. Namaste from me. And uh, next time we keep on forgetting. Let us, let us have country flags uh, to have uh, all the countries on the screen. That's uh, really good idea. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Stay safe, stay healthy, bye.